Hey guys. Hey. So bear with us because this is our first actual semi-scripted video and by scripted I only mean bullet points. Um, we're pretty new to this and don't really have much idea what we're doing so um, we're learning we're learning but we will get better and we got to start somewhere and this is it so we are currently in Phuket Thailand Surin Beach Surin Beach it is absolutely heavenly cannot recommend this place enough so um, my name is Jen I'm originally from Canada I'm just about to turn 40. My birthday's in less than two weeks now. I went to high school in the U.S. I lived there for four years. I uh, went to school in Washington State. Moved back to Canada, moved to several different cities till I was 25, and then I moved to Australia. I lived in Sydney for nine years, and then I moved to Melbourne for five years, um, which is where I met this fine gentleman. Um, my parents are divorced. They got divorced when I was quite young. So I've basically grown up with two families. Um, I have two stepsisters from my dad and my stepmom, and I have a half brother and a half sister from my dad, or I mean, from my mom and several different fathers. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a bit of a mix, all of us. Um, my parents were both very liberal. They didn't place all that many rules on me. They probably should have, because I was a nightmare. Um, but they have always encouraged me to do whatever it was in life that was gonna make me happy, which I'm really, really, really grateful for. So um, it's led me to do a lot of crazy things in life. <laughs> um, my work history is all over the place. I've developed photos at Walmart. I've put handles on buckets, I've been a clown at kids parties, I have, I worked in the car business for seven years, um, I worked as a waitress at a million different places, um, I could probably add a bunch more to the list, but when I moved to Australia I started in the adult entertainment industry and became a exotic dancer, which led me to a million other things, um, such as modeling, uh, bitted TV, extra work. Um, I had a radio show, I started a clothing line, um, and I ended up buying the agency that I worked for for over a decade. Um, yeah, which pretty much leads me to today. So, what about you, babe? Okay, my name is Nico. I'm 36 years old. I am Greek heritage, but I was born and raised in Australia, Melbourne, Australia. I was raised by, I guess, an, a, a kind of old-fashioned, in a kind of old-fashioned way, by, by my family. Where that we, my family's Greek Orthodox, but they're not very religious, so we're just sort of raised, in, in a in an old-fashionedish way. Yeah, I guess. With um, traditional with, family tradi values. With traditional family values, I was very. Cl I'm very close with my family, so I love them very much, and they're cool. Yeah. Um, religious beliefs. I don't really have many religious beliefs besides my, I guess my Easter rituals. We would celebrate things like Christmas and, and Easter, but that was just more of a family get together, if anything. And yeah, um, I've been in construction my whole working career, pretty much up until recently. I, I, I started off. Uh, working with my dad in, in uh, doing things like rendering and solid plastering, uh, home restorations. This is the type of area that I that I work in is, is kind of old, uh, old uh, Victorian style construction. So we kind of specialised in that. And then I went on my own and started my own business for about three years in bathroom renovations with a friend. That didn't turn out so good. And then I went to, back into construction for an employer for the for the last say five years of my life so and just recently I've I've converted over to investing in cryptocurrencies and, and things like that so yeah and now we're here and now we're here yeah yeah so just to go back to my religious beliefs because I didn't touch on that um, my mom has been very Christian most 
pretty most of my life and uh, she dragged me through several different religions as a child which pretty much led me to tell them all to fuck off because <laughs> I thought they were all bullshit um, so I considered myself agnostic for a long time my dad's not really very religious at all so um, yeah I'm pretty spiritual now I'd say I'm spiritual is the right way to describe how I am with my beliefs and yeah and my seeking I yeah. never thought I would say this but that's kind of where I'm headed to yeah but we'll get to that later I've become more of a seeker than a believer Yes. Let's see can you shall find. Yeah. All right. Yeah, how we met. We met through our friend Tim. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thanks, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Timmy. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not really much more to say about it than that, is there? No, we, we met a couple of times, we hung out a few times, and yeah. we didn't see each other for a couple of years. Yeah. And then um, he turned up on my couch one day, and I wanted to bang him. Uh, and it happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then we actually liked each other. Yeah. <laughs> so here we are. Um, we've been together two and a bit years now. Yeah. Um, it's been magical, baby. It's been closer to three years, actually. No one has it. Whatever. <laughs> February, March, April. It's been two years and like three months. Okay. Well, there's that then. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I should probably go first when it comes to how we started our spiritual journey because my story is a lot shorter. So, my mother has been a conspiracy theorist for a long time now. And she used to say a lot of what I thought were crazy, maniacal things that made absolutely no sense to me. And that combined with- When you were um, younger? Well, when I was in my 20s, yeah. yeah. So mostly, mostly in my 20s. I don't remember her speaking like that too much when I was younger than that because I don't think she knew yet. So this, yeah, in my early 20s um, until I left Canada when I was 25, um, probably from 18 to 25, I would hear these things from my mom. And the longer time went on, the more I just thought she had absolutely lost her mind. And, you know, that combined with um, a rocky relationship history that we already had led me to actually completely cut her off for over eight years. During that eight years, I got into adult entertainment and I realized very quickly that I absolutely love the industry and I started doing a bit of research into how to make lots of money in the industry. And I bought a book written by uh, a stripper and in the book was a list of books that she suggested were important to read. Now one of these books was called The Creature from Jekyll Island. It's about the financial structure of the Federal Reserve and the IMF and how money works as a whole. So that was my first awakening with regards to, to anything really, um, just how corrupt the financial system is. And although the book is very hard to read at some points, um, it completely Completely changed my belief systems and and my ideology when it came to finances so that was the start of it for me um, then a couple of years passed and my mom introduced me to a friend of hers named Robin now I sat down with Robin one night and he started to explain a lot of things to me with regards to political corruption and um, things like human trafficking and things like celebrity and basically he took a whole bunch of events and facts that I knew from history and he presented them in such a way where I could see that We had to come back into our room because the camera overheated. Yeah, it was really hot up there. Anyhow, um, I was talking about uh, my mum's friend Robin. 
So he combined all of these events in in history that I already knew about and put them in a chronological order that showed me that the world is not run the way that I think it is and made me realize that politics are not really even a thing and that regardless of what party we choose the same thing's going to happen pretty much just it's just going to look different on the surface so that was the second part of the, my awakening and my third part was brought on by that good old pandemic that we had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was in lockdown for the better part of two years in Melbourne, Australia. I think their intention was to break us all um, and for the most part it worked. On me, however, it just made me fucking angry and Every day I got angrier and angrier, which led me to being more defiant and wanting to dig up more corruption and um, yeah, it just it made me realize how bad things actually are. Because even though I had my first two awakenings, I kind of thought, well, you know, it's not really my problem. If I don't really think about it, life is just going to go on as normal. It doesn't affect me. But when the pandemic hit, the pandemic, I realized it does very much affect me. Um, to which my entire belief structure and systems and values came crashing down all around me. And then we had started dating by this point. And I guess my spiritual awakening kind of came when you came along. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe it had already started a little bit, I just didn't really know what it was. So having someone who was already awakened to guide me through the process was very helpful because there's been many days when I thought I was losing my mind. But what I can say is that... And you were. <laughs> I was coming to my senses. Yes, you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I can say is that I'm really, really sorry for not believing my mom all those years because it, I've come to realize that everything she said was, was true. Never saw that coming. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, now uh, let's talk about your spiritual journey. Okay. My spiritual journey and awakening happened, I guess it started to happen when I left high school. I realized after I left high school I had a bit of a thirst for, for knowledge and I, it was like a little addiction of mine where I just needed to learn about stuff, things like physics, uh, astrology, uh, just all the different biology, just all the different sciences. Um, and uh, then eventually I started learning a bit about religion. I found that a bit interesting, so I looked into a bit of religion and then a bit of history. So I was a bit of a researcher always. It was just kind of part of my characteristic sets. And um, I'm 36 now. It would have been about 10 years ago, so around 25, 26 years old. I, I had a, uh, just bef before then, I had a bit of a breakup with, with my girlfriend, who I was with for 10 years. And I experienced a bit of loneliness, um, which was good for me, I, I realise now, but at the time I didn't realise that, that loneliness was good for me. Because uh, it gave me time just to really spend alone and do, and just learn about myself more, I guess. I learned about myself more and I, and I did more research into things. and. I was kind of going the opposite way to all my friends because all my friends were settling down in relationships and in their careers and I was going the opposite way and I didn't realise it at the time but uh, yeah it was just it was part of my awakening process and um, uh, awakenings are never never comfortable things I guess and I'm still going through this process of awakening. We, we all are. Yeah. Through that solitude I did some <clears throat> some learning about myself and, 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 and and spirituality and, and some of the different teachings of, of native peoples and, and the, the yogic cultures and the Tibetan cultures and I would do this in solitude I was learning about this stuff in solitude I would never speak to it about other people because I didn't think that other people would understand there would be the odd friend in my group who I could share, share a little bit more than, than I could with others yeah and it just things just 
kept on happening. I, I, I went through a bit of a, a drug addiction also. I, I went through a pretty heavy addiction uh, time of my life for about three years and that helped me learn about how my body works and how if the system's not healthy then the mind's not healthy and the emotions aren't healthy and 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 yeah and I'm just here now and I I well one thing that I also started to learn about was how the, the money system works and how the system that we live in living works because I wanted to to learn how to make more money so I could have financial freedom because that was important to me at the time because I would hear through a few songs and stuff like how you know money's another form of slavery and just it's made me sort of those little seeds that got planted into me they sort of yeah they, they stuck inside me and I, I sort of did a lot of research into that so yeah through that through that learning about the system I found some other ways of making money like trading and investing and then I stumbled across Bitcoin and that's kind of something that I'm still learning about now and trying to learn how to how to invest my money wisely which is I guess important because money is just a form of energy as well I and mean, we kind of need that to we don't, we don't need it but it can make our lives easier and it can be a tool to do things with so yeah I've been trying to yeah I guess that's part of my waking story <laughs> for sure yeah now living in Australia has been challenging for the last I mean it's always challenging to some degree because it's so bloody expensive and the government is just out of control with policies and regulations and red tape and bureaucracy yeah, yeah, yeah. but through the good old pandemic we learned that it's totally okay to lock up the entire population for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Um, we are aware that this is not over and um, there is a very, very good possibility that everyone in Australia is going to get locked up again. So we don't want to find ourselves in that situation. No, we don't. No. And the world is broken up into different categories of BRICS nations and NATO and, and there's all these new things that we're navigating at the moment that we, you know, the whole world has never had to deal with before. So we've both heard over, over the years about strategic relocation yeah. and how important it is to, to live in a country where... Yeah, and how to get prepared for, for the sort of upcoming changes and that are happening to to the world as well so so the change is like YouTube helped us a lot with that too so thanks to all those people out there definitely main channels and, and share their their stories and, and, and information so yeah yeah so we are trying to avoid having to sign up for a digital ID because we believe that this is complete and total control basically totalitarianism yeah um, we're against forced medical procedures such as the you know what that we can't still talk about to some degree so we won't yeah. even get into that australia is in line to have a social credit system that is very similar to what they have in communist china and both of our social credit scores are get, scores are going to be awful based on our history <laughs> so we've got no chance there um yeah, so we're trying to avoid those things. Obviously, we want to live in a country where we have some freedom and that we feel is safe and it is hopefully tropical. Yeah. Because I can't stand the snow. Um, and, you know, where the, the belief systems and the, the values of the people are similar to ours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, I don't know, my belief systems are just due to others. Yeah. You know, sort of karmic principles and yeah. just don't be a shit cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to start the channel for a few reasons. First of all, I have quit my job. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I bought a company 38 days before lockdown hit. And I basically just Houdini'd it about a m five weeks ago and I'm just completely shutting down my company. So I need a job. <laughs> also, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> also, 
there's plenty of people that are just starting their awakening journeys and might find themselves in the exact same position that we're in. So, you know, if, if we found a channel like this to help us right now, we'd probably be watching it. So we figured maybe we should be the ones to offer it. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Um, we hope to achieve a few things. Um, first of all, awakenings are difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If we can help other people with with their awakening process, just by sharing like some of our experiences, maybe it will help. So, yeah. By being candid and um, truthful and raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About you know what we do right what we do wrong how our, our emotions are going throughout it yeah. how it affects our relationship yeah, yeah, yeah. with each other with ourselves with our families yeah yeah and just like how how our lives have changed on a daily basis to see how living uh, uh, just our daily routines is, is, have changed through our awakening process and uh things like relocating the pro that whole process might help other people just show uh, shed some light on just what that looks like you know yeah or what it shouldn't look like yeah. when, we, when we screw things up yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um it's also a great way to I, i've always been somebody who's, who's journaled most of my life um i've made a lot of um what do you call them, scrapbooks and things over the years photos and endless endless hours and nights of just writing filling my thoughts onto paper so this is just another way of journaling for me I think it's gonna be a great thing to record our journey through all of this as well just to look back on a personal level how, how do we feel about this oh god Whoa. <laughs> it's a roller coaster of emotions sometimes there's like there's fears there's fears involved like Letting go of some things that you don't want to let go of necessarily, like family and and comforts of like uh, of the things that you have in in built up cities, you know, like, like citizenship. Yes, <laughs> conveniences and and other fears like doubts, like oh, will I be able to do this? Just uh, you know, sometimes, yeah. If, there's a little inner voice that has doubt sometimes, that, and the unknown can be scary as well. So, uh, yeah, there is a, there is a little bit of fear and stuff until you, until you t take action, and then sometimes you see on the other side of that fear is some pretty cool stuff. So, um, yeah, what about you? Fear is oh, fear on the fear side of the spectrum. Look, I'm gonna be honest mm. <laughs> on the fear side. She's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have many fears, but no. I mean, I've done this before, yeah. so it's very different for me. I've been away from my family since I was a teenager, so um, I'm used to being abroad, I'm used to being in different countries, and I'm used to the joys of trying to get residency yeah. and citizenship in another country, so um, the, only, the only thing I'm fearful of is having to go back to Australia, really, <laughs> or to Canada, because yeah. Canada is just as fucked as Australia. Yeah. But um, sometimes the fears of wondering whether the market's going to go up or, or down as well can get, get, get involved. So I am I'm 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 fearful of how he's going to react to things sometimes, um, because I understand people's fears when it comes to this sort of thing because I've been through it. So mm. I'm I'm fearful of his fears yeah. and how they might affect things moving forward. But look, there's not too many fears. Mostly, mostly, mostly excitement and and uh, and what's the word? Uh, I kind of feel a bit liberated that now that we've made a move, we've come down to Thailand and and, and it's great here, and just things are more heart in the heart space. It's cool. You think that's liberating? Wait till I get you naked in the ocean. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so currently we're um, we're just here on a tourist visa, so we only got 30 days. So we're in the very early stages of pretty much just sit, checking out Thailand and being like, do we want to live here? Is this a good place to live? How easy is the process? We're, we're still at the very, very beginning stages of this yeah, process. Yeah, we're looking to taxes and everything. Yeah, it just, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, that's for another video, isn't it? That is for another video. So I think that's us. That's us. Over and out. We have to do a better conclusion, babe. He just wants to <laughs> Conclusion, Duncan. I need conclusion. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Be child! <laughs>